What's up everybody? Um, I'm over here waiting at the rail yard. Cause the, the chassis that my container is on, um, the landing gear don't want to go up and I can't put it up. I talked to driver assistance and well, they just told me to wait and I told dispatch, dispatch told me to wait. So I'm like, all right, um, hold up. Let me really get this. There we go. Cause it's a little loud outside right now. So I wanted to talk about an encounter. I know that the lighting sucks and everything. So bear with me, you know, Computer's got to go through all its bells and whistles. So, um, I had an issue at a customer. What was that? Saturday? Well, I think it was Saturday. I normally don't, I don't normally do like early morning loads. Ugh, this is annoying. I normally don't do early morning loads. I usually do like afternoon to evening like right now it's probably like 11 p.m. and uh, they had me picking a load up down in Ote Mesa California at 11 in the morning but my 10 hour rest break wasn't up till like 8 think so yeah um and I was running a little bit behind I had to grab an empty trailer I had to and then you know thankfully it was su uh, oh, my, no it was Saturday I think it was still yeah it was Saturday thankfully though there was no traffic because it was the weekend um because it normally would take me about three hours to get down there not two it took me two um because the traffic the traffic wasn't there so but now I had to wake up about 6 30 in the morning because I gotta make sure I can wake up then it takes like a depending on if I stop and get myself Starbucks I get uh gotta give myself at least an hour to get to work even though I only live like 20 30 minutes away because you know I want that Starbucks anyway so on Saturday I was oh man we go so on Saturday I was at a customer and I okay how, how would I okay hold on let me get this story straight so that I get it straight you know I don't want to give any false information all I know is I'm pissed off still two days later <laughs> uh I get to the customer, I go to a door because their doors aren't marked shipping, receiving, none of that. I see there's two trucks and, and a dock and one truck and another dock and you know, the building's huge. So I go to check in. I'm already like eight minutes late because of trying to find an empty trailer and my 10 hour clock not being up and just a whole bunch of BS because you know, I don't live on my truck. So 10 hour clock I need uh, time to unwind and I wasn't used to the morning shift so um, so Saturday Saturday I roll around and I get to the customer I'm trying to check in I'm trying to find the um, the entry door I'm trying to find where the hell am I supposed to go right uh, I, I ring a bell and this little Mexican lady answers it and was like, oh no, you have to go to door four. I go to door four, ring the bell, another dude answers. He's like, oh no, you have to go back over to door eight. And I was like, you mean the next door over? He was like, yeah, that next door. I said, well, a little, little lady told me to come talk to you guys because told me to come over here. And he was like, no, no, you need to go to the last door. I was like, okay. So I go to the last door, somebody comes answers and they like push the door open and they didn't even stop it none of that they didn't do anything but like they didn't try to hold the door open nothing they were just like push oh somebody's there and then it closed i'm like what the hell 
they pushed it open. I got it. I grabbed it, held it open. And then I went inside and there were, I think, three or four guys there. Um, and I was checking in and I told the guy, you know, he wanted the, uh, the tractor license plate number. I said, like, hey, dude, I don't know that by heart. Sorry. Like, if you want it, I can go out and grab it. He's like, no, you're fine. Just uh, fill all this out. I said, okay, fill it out. And then uh, there was this dude that was there. Uh, later, he introduces himself as Davey. I'll get to that in a second. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, I go and I ask the dude that's Davey. I said, hey, do you guys have a restroom? You know, because... I just drove like two and a half hours to, you know, holding whatever it is I need to go because I'm not used to being up this early. And if I am, I'm usually on the pot, you know, doing my morning biz, right? So, uh, he, he, he tells me, all right, whenever, whenever door six moves back in, I said, okay. And he told me where the restrooms were at. So I was like, all right, cool. So I went and I basically almost ran my ass to the bathroom so I could make it. And, uh, I come back out. They're already gone. Door six is already gone. So I back up and, uh, I go, and I'm like, all right, cool. I'm backed up. The, they flipped the switch, the uh, light turned red and I was just sitting there going through my finances. Then this dude come up and I roll my window down. I'm like, what's up? And he was like, is there a reason your wheels aren't chalked? And I'm like, nobody told me to chalk my wheels. Okay. And uh, he goes, he was like, oh, you don't care about the safety of those that are going in and out of your trailer? And I'm like, what? <laughs> and he was like, can't you read the sign? I'm like, damn, dude. Like, and it said, like, notice drivers chalk your wheels. But I mean, I've been to a ton of customers that had that sign. And they're like, yeah, don't even worry about it. I guess what it is is like, is that an OSHA thing? Like... I've gone to so many customers that, and, and then a lot of them have those dock locks that you don't need to chalk your wheels. So it's like, they still have those signs, but they don't have the chalks. So I don't know, maybe like, I, I need, I need some input on this, right? Because I don't feel that like, you know, okay, this dude come out and straight was calling me ignorant in so many words. He was like, you can't read the sign. I said, what? Like, he wouldn't even give me a chance to answer. And he was like, it's automatic. You chalk your wheels wherever you go. And I'm like, dude, I don't even, I can't even tell you how many customers I've been to that I chalk, I, oh my gosh, dude, are you serious? Are you coming at me like that? He was coming at me like that, right? For real. He was about like up to right here on me. And it almost looked like he was trying to size me up. And I'm five foot nine, and when I wear my tennis shoes, I'm almost five ten, right? I'm I'm pretty tall, and I'm not small by any means. I'm pushing. I'm 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 pretty big, okay. Anyway, so um, but no, this dude comes up and he's just giving me shit, and I had my mask on, and he was like. Ma'am, you need to put your... And he had his mask on. He had like a beard thing, a mask, and like a hairnet. Because it's a food food thing. It was a refrigerated warehouse. And he goes, he was like, uh, ma'am, you need to uh, put your mask on. I was like, okay, I put my mask on. And then he's like, right here. And I look over to my side. And I'm looking at the chalk. He comes up to my face. He's like, you see that sign? I'm like, damn, dude. Back up. Like, I, I don't have a fight or a flight response. I have a freeze response. And it's really irking because it's like, you don't really think about like what you could have done in a situation until the situation's already passed. And being who I am, I'm just trying to find where it's the least confrontation, least amount of confrontation in a situation because I don't want to exacerbate it, you know? So this dude, like, oh dude, I, I, I was, I'm already stressed. Like life is stressful, dude. Why are you trying to stress people out? Like, and then he tells me, he's like, I can't teach you common sense. All right. All right, little dude. He was about a, a Hispanic or Mexican dude. Probably in his late 30s, early 40s. About five foot, five, five, six. And he just was an angry little man. 
instead of coming at me being sarcastic and being a little asshole, he could have said, hey, ma'am, you really need to chalk your wheels. We'd appreciate it if you read the sign. I said, oh, I'm sorry, my bad, and I chalk my wheels. That would have been over and done with. What are you talking about? I, safety. Are you kidding me? The only reason why my truck would be moving is because you guys are going in and out of the damn trailer too mother effing fast and it's pushing my truck forward. Okay? Think about that. Think about that. It's like when they're going in and out of the truck and or they're going in and out of the trailer, you know, that's really lowering our airbags too. I was, I had a container. There is no airbags on that. That's all spring system. That is not a comfortable ride. So when it's bouncing, it's bouncing bad. Especially because I'm in a day cab. I feel those bumps. So I'm like, alright. But see, this is the job I chose. Because, I mean, it's pretty easy. It's pretty, you know, it's pretty chill. Laid back. When you don't have to communicate with anybody. When you can just do your job. Go home. It's so nice and easy. But this dude had me so riled up. And if it were any of my friends, they would have told him, hey dude, step the fuck back. Six feet of space. Here you are telling me to put my mask on and you can't even stay in your six feet distance. You can yell at me from six feet by all means. But when you coming at me like that, I'm feeling like, holy shit, this guy is sizing me up. And he, if I make a wrong comment or move, He's going to start throwing punches because he's going to feel, uh, what do you call that? He's going to feel a certain way. I can't think of the word right now, but it's going to piss him off. And I told my dispatch about this. I sent them a message because I'm, I'm a pretty laid back person. I'm just whatever, you know, like I got my moments. Dispatch has worked with me. Like I can get an attitude. Sometimes I do. They call me on it. Okay, cool. Like, Everybody gets an attitude every now and then. Even my dispatch gets attitude. And it's like, what? Like, and we all have, sometimes we all have our dumb days, you know? Like, we're so stressed out or our mind isn't there. It's somewhere else. And it's like, they say we have to be 100% involved with our job. 100% involved with our work. Well, it's like, if there's stuff going on in our heads that, you know, like, we're, we're somewhere else. We're never, we'll, like, you can, you can be... You can say that you're 100% with your driving. Like you're 100% aware, involved, but honestly, you're never 100%. Nope. Nobody. Anybody that says, oh, well, I set the radio before I start driving. Anybody says, I do this before I start driving. Yeah, you're a damn liar. I've seen those people that say that and then they, they just, that's a lie. That's a blatant lie. It's like, I'm not saying that you can't be safe. I'm just saying that sometimes our minds aren't all there. But it's like when you got somebody coming out and trying to call you out, that's that's really messed up, man. Like, dude, I get it. But if you, oh, he, yeah, he introduced himself as Davey. And he was like, what's your name? I show him my badge. He's like, oh, it's Cassie. I said, yeah, yeah, it is. What you want my here's my badge number. You want to talk to my dispatch? Go ahead. Go for it. It's like if they don't have my back, then I know what my company's about because I'm being disrespected right now. And I don't appreciate being disrespected. Doesn't you know, it don't matter. Like you can talk to somebody calmly. But it's like it irked me cuz he said, "I guess you don't care about the safety of others." motherfucker like this dude does not he's probably one of those guys that drives the four-wheelers you know like the cars they probably he's probably one of those dudes that fucking doesn't use his blinker cuts trucks off doesn't give a shit and he's like oh i'm just pissed off i'm gonna take you out with me because i'm pissed off people are like that hell sometimes i'm even like that because you know there's some days where it's like try me motherfucker try me try me okay it just, it brings me back to, uh, there was this day that I, um, you know, and it's when you get, you're given a certain amount of authority and I guess you take it a little too far. Unknowingly, you're taking it far. I got to call, uh, driver assistance here in a minute because I've been sitting here way too motherfucking long. So, uh, when I, what was it? It was back in 2012. 
I, uh, like, what was it? Dispatch was complaining about where the drivers were parking, and I was, we had two different, because I worked for CR England, and I helped start up their maintenance fleet for, uh, the Walmart fleet. So, um, well, I'm losing my, losing my thought process because I'm getting distracted. Because I'm like, oh, I gotta do this, and I gotta do that, and I gotta do this, and I gotta do that, and I gotta do this, and that. Anyway, um, Basically, the driver had parked in an area that was undesignated, and, uh, and it's funny too because I had my uh, my friend in the the passenger side before he was passenger side seat before he became my friend. I didn't even know he was going to become my friend. That's cool. But uh, <laughs> I'm leaving the facility, and uh, the guy, the other driver. I don't remember what was uh, what exactly had ensued. I just remember I was like, motherfucker. That's all I said, and he heard me. Then dispatch called me in after I got back from moving trucks, and he was like, she was like, no, she, she, she was like, did you just call another driver, motherfucker? I said, no, I said, motherfucker. And they basically said that I was on the verge of losing my job because I told somebody to move their damn truck. It's like I was trying to keep the, what do you call it, um, where, you know, everybody parks in their spot. It was a lease operator parking in day cab parking at the CR England Premier School because that's where the Walmart fleet originally started. So I, I'm just like, damn, dude. Like, how am I gonna? I'm gonna lose my job before because I fucking cuss somebody out. I'm like, damn, dude. Only two years into my career, I'm like, damn. So I go back, and me and this dude, we see each other, and we both end up apologizing to each other. I'd be like, hey, dude, you know, I just wasn't a good mood, and I'm like, hey, dude, I wasn't either. You know, I don't know what was going on, and it's just it. Everything was building up, and. It's just some days are just shit. And some days people reflect that shit onto you. And it's up to us to be like, all right, I'm going to take this shit. But I'm going to put it off to the side because it's not my shit to take. It's your shit. It's like when people come at you in a negative manner, it's usually because they're reflecting something going on inside of them something that they're battling so it's like we got to keep calm like when I get angry I get shaky oh my goodness like you know how a chihuahua shakes I shake like a damn chihuahua okay when I get angry I can't function I can't think nothing but I'm getting a little better I'm getting a little better like my dispatch chewed me out because I got a service failure recently and um it was on the phone, and I didn't want to hear him yelling at me. I sent him emails. He still insisted on being on the damn phone and yelling at me. All he had to do was say, because you caused a service failure, we're going to have to write you up. No, he gets on the phone with me and says, we got to give you a verbal warning. I'm like, okay. I still ended up getting written up. I'm like, well, how is that a verbal if I got written up? And everybody keeps going past me. Anyway. Share your stories with me. You know, I'm curious, like, what else are you experiencing? Like, as a shipper, receiver, driver, even, you know, retail. Like, I'm pretty sure everybody's got some horror stories, you know? Like, how rude customers can be. Like, I don't, I, I don't think I could be in that customer service position because I would say something. Like, enough people would get on my nerves. I would be like, you know, I really apologize if it's my fuck up. But if it's not my fuck up, don't fucking belittle me. Like, I will take this fucking frappa cappuccino and throw it in your gash damn face. Okay? I will make sure that it hurts. Not really. I'm such a wuss. But it just, that's that's what goes through my mind. Anyway, I gotta call driver assistance. Maybe they'll be coming to uh, flip this dang trailer. Because I still gotta go up to Victorville, okay? Anyway, y'all have a good night now here.
Peace, cheese, lemon squeeze. Bye.